What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Paul of Devil Soul to Soul. Thank you so much for being here today, man. It's great to hey, be able to chat with you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, anytime. So the new album is Lost. That's coming out via Nuclear Blast, April 9th. This is the first album to feature you and Ed collaborating together on vocals. So did you like, do you feel that maybe that this album has maybe a different spark or a different flair than what we would get on, you know, the previous offerings such as a fragile hope or blessed and cursed and so on and so forth i think so yeah i mean the themes are obviously a bit different as well we've sort of gone into some stuff as way way more personal in terms of the loss of stuff family members but in terms of our writing styles you know, we've kind of smashed together what ed and i do best um we try to you know, make it as uh interesting as possible as as we would anyway but um, the fact that we've got the two of us together, we kind of combined that more emotional side with maybe some of the more anthemic uh, types of work that we've done in the past. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice uh, mix of everything. But do you feel that being that uh, the last thing that we got from uh, Devil Soul to Soul is the Belong and Betray EP, which uh, came out in 2014? Do you think that maybe that in a way serves as like a little bit of a trailer for what we could get on Lost or maybe like a direction on what you were going to contribute into devil soul to soul or does that or does loss really have nothing to do with that i think i think that was kind of a stepping stone for me blanca trade like i'm really proud of it um but it was my first time writing that type of music so i think it was kind of a learning curve in some ways whereas like i've always been in like a tech metal band pretty much my whole life so when i moved over to devil soul to soul it's um i had to learn more songwriting techniques and i think for that uh, you know, Blog Betray was a little bit pieced together, um, whereas this is a cohesive um, album where we've you know, really got like a, a, a strong message that we've kind of uh, built in from day one, um, rather than just put five songs together that kind of we just had around, mm -hmm. and which all Blog Betray kind of was. Um, I think this is a much better, much stronger record uh, than Blog Betray personally, but I mean, most bands would say that when they've got a new album coming out. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm dead proud of this man. Like, um, I think I, I don't think there's a single track on it which I wouldn't keep. Um, so that's that's saying something for me. <laughs> I'm quite picky with it. Was there maybe like a preconceived idea of what you and the band wanted Lost to sound like, or was there maybe like a lot of experimentation or trial and error involved? Um, it, we didn't go in with a preconceived idea. Definitely not. Um, I guess we just. Because we, we don't like, you know, write every song all up front musically and then drop it to us as vocals. We kind of did it over a couple of years um, and just whatever felt right at the time. So it was musically Ed and, uh, sorry, uh, Rick and Johnny, the guitarists, write most of the stuff. So it's whatever place they were in, really, with those tracks um, came about. And then we would get in the practice room together as a, as six of us and just kind of piece it together from there. And that's worked really nicely. Um, I think, you know, over those years of writing it, it's given us an opportunity to maybe bring in some other elements of our lives that we weren't necessarily writing about initially. Um, like, you know, some of the more mental health stuff, uh, uh, you find the witness marks versus some of like, you know, the last track, for example, which is about uh, Alex, our drummer's mum passing away. Um, so, you, you know, you kind of, any album should be, what well, we feel it should be about your life at the time and bringing it in to make it as real as possible. Mm -hmm. Did you like think of this message before, uh, you know, you started writing and kind of wrote the music according to that? Or did this idea or this message kind of develop as, you know, more and more songs are written and laid down and everything? Um, it, it's it was a weird one because like well Alex's mum like passed kind of right at the start and it was really unexpected so it kind of framed the whole album it really gave us a starting point um, we were I, funnily enough the song we wrote about her is the last track it was, it was the last track we wrote full stop um, but I, I guess it, it gave us an idea that you know everyone had been going through some pretty tough times where you know, whether they'd lost someone in, close to them or other otherwise so i guess that was always gonna sort of um become the theme of the album um obviously things are a bit better now so we, we got to the end we almost changed the title but then we were like well everything on this record is about hard times and it's about getting through them 
um, and it's that mourning process. It's, it's about survival and it's about all of those bits that, and mortality that we kind of wanted to discuss. So Lost was always, it always meant, was meant to be that title, the, the album. Mm-hmm. Do you, obviously, you know, when, when there's a message or a theme for an album, that obviously influences the lyrics, but do you almost feel that maybe it could dictate the direction of the music itself as well? Oh, it did. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially on, like, it's one of the tracks, Tatayishi, um, which was written by Johnny. Um, you know, his his family suffered, like, again, another, another really, really, really sad loss. Um, someone passed, and he wrote that song specifically about musically obviously we wrote the, ed and i wrote the lyrics and the vocals but um yeah musically and there, there's a lot of sadness in the uh, in the music itself and that's that really shows the place that he was in when he wrote it mm-hmm. um and you know we just we sat down and we just sort of spoke spoke about how we were going to approach that track and make it as uh as in keeping with his music as we possibly could vocally as well um with those themes Mm-hmm. Do you feel that maybe the first uh, three singles that you released off of Loss, uh, Burden, uh, The Narcissist, and Beyond Reach can maybe serve as like sonically as a good representation of what the entirety of this album is going to sound like, or is that just one little piece of the puzzle? I think it's, a, uh, it's still, we've been asked this a few times, and it's, um, I'd say it's a, it's a piece of the puzzle, definitely. There's um, obviously Beyond Reach is kind of quite melodic and up uplifting in some ways and narcissist is heavy as hell and really angry um and, and uh, burdened is is a mixture of the two plus a load of other stuff and we kind of i guess with this album we try to make everything pretty different every song has its own place on there we haven't gone for like a concept in terms of the sound it has to be the same throughout um it's yeah, and that kind of made it difficult for us to pick our singles because we we all had different favourites, and um, that's cool. I mean, that, that's what you kind of want. You want people to enjoy the whole album. So, um, yeah, I hope people do. I really, really do bloody hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, they definitely will. And and I consider Devil Souls as Souls music to be on the little more experimental side because, I mean, like you mentioned, these three singles alone, you have real hard heavy hitters, but then you have stuff that thrives more on melody. You know, people have called you metalcore and all this but like i see post metal yeah, influences yeah, yeah. i see real many different aspects in the periodic table of subgenres we all talk about so like do you feel that maybe like for devil soul to soul that like experimenting with the style and pushing new boundaries is almost just part of the songwriting process in general yeah i think so i mean i guess we never really go out out of our way to try and say we want to make this album completely like pushing those boundaries, etc. But it just—it's just kind of where we are when we write it, and um, we never want to repeat what we've done. And I think that's important. You don't want to just do a, do the last album again because, so it, as much as the fans would probably go, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted for us as, as artists, and like any artist in any band would probably go, I've trodden those those boards before. I want to do something new. I want to freshen it up. And we've come, you know, instrumentally, the guys are extremely talented they play within themselves a lot on these records i think people would probably say that oh it's quite a lot of chords and, and just blank riffs no they're really really talented guys um and you know musically i've come from a tech metal background but i'm used to doing progressive music so this, for, for me it's the case of like i want to make this interesting uh, i want to i want every track of write to be not just your run, run of the mill verse chorus verse chorus middle eight chorus sort of thing we, we want to do something just a bit further than that and that's something that can capture people and bring and reel them into the project. And the prog background, that's why you have songs like Witness Marks that's or a, or the title track Lost yeah, that's, you know, eight minutes or seven and a half minutes. I'm surprised you didn't go for the twenty minute mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a long one. Uh, we yeah well like um no no what i was gonna say is because kind of going back to what you said like i think you're damned if you do damned if you don't because if you do the same thing every time people are going to criticize you for being repetitive and formulaic but if you experiment (laughs) people will criticize you for being directionless so it almost seems like you kind of go with a gut instinct feeling as well right absolutely yeah we're going to get criticism regardless of from some people so you just do what you need to do and do what you feel what feels right at the time and that's that say that to anyone if anyone's starting a band up from scratch be you don't worry about what other people want you to be 
Mm-hmm. And being that, you know, that you have the stool vocal style coming in now, and, you know, being that Lacuna Coil is one of my favorite bands, I love the whole dual vocal style. Oh, cool, yeah, you know, like, the way that We Came as Romans has been able to do it, and so many other bands. Like, do you almost feel that you and Ed kind of need to be in the same state of mind, or be in the same uh, headspace when either writing lyrics or tracking vocals in order to, like, make the songs so- sound rather cohesive? I guess with the the tracking, not so much. I think we were in a good place the, all the way through. We didn't really have any issues there. Um, lyrically, you have to be on the same page. And that's that's a tougher bit. Um, we never fell out at all about anything, but it was a case of with the lyrics, we had to really work on our process there. So, um, you know, one of us would write a draft and then pass it to the other to, to refine. Um, and that was kind of how we worked it because we tried to work side by side, writing lyrics and we just, we just hit blocks and it you know we just it just didn't work out so um yeah we had to make sure that 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 side of things we really really were on the same page but um otherwise everything was totally cool um i, th- I think it's just it's really lucky that it has been that way because my other band the arusha record we had two vocalists from day one and it was never that easy so yeah, yeah. And what's up? Do, do you, if people were to get to know you and Ed very well, like maybe like a lifelong friend of yours or something, and they read your lyrics, would they be able to tell who wrote what in a way? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think you. I think you could tell some of Ed's definitely. Um, I guess I try and write really quite plain and simple. This is how how the story in my head is, and this is these are the words I want people to read and understand the track. Ed's a bit more poetic, I guess. Um, so if you, if you look at some of the older albums with like a fragile hope etc there's a lot in there that allows you to read into the, the songs how you wish and maybe think of it as a bit more just a, maybe a little bit more interesting in some people's eyes maybe whatever like um but we combine this together and i think some people would probably notice who's written what bit but i don't really care i mean they're both our songs we we just say 50 50. <laughs> yeah better off <laughs> and and yeah. it seems like you're able to like lyrically approach things from both a very literal and metaphorical standpoint as well right yeah 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 definitely um i think that's important um because you know sometimes you can't always get across directly what you want to say uh, with lyrics because the song can dictate things to you uh you know structures and the way the parts play out so i think you to have those both in your pocket those different ways of writing lyrics i think it's important to be able to do that because otherwise you can really get blocks in there lyrically and creatively yeah and i i mean is there a certain art to like escaping an artist block like is there a strategy behind that or like do you just have to <laughs> or, or like do you just have to let it pl- like kind of like run its course so we we when we were writing we um, the way that we dealt with it is like if we were having a really good day writing and we've got to a point where we felt we'd finished stuff and we were in a good place we'd stop if we were had a if we had a bit of a writer's block that day we'd stop and we'd go to the pub mm. <laughs> and just have a like have a drink have a chat kind of relax and then approach it the next day get back to it just try not to grind yourself down I think that's important because I I don't know what other singers are like but if you get a writer's block it can be contagious and if you don't try and put a block a stop to it it can just stick with you for a while so trying to stop it before it starts is like a really really positive thing yeah and and kind of going back to the message as well because loss and you know the concept of loss and you know the the pain of you know grief and all this i mean that's something that is the most relatable subject matter is it the most pleasant absolutely not but like it is the most relatable subject nah. matter and it's very uncomfortable for people and thank you for addressing it because you know that is something that Makes should sense. be addressed do you want the listener to maybe kind of apply this album to their own life and kind of leave it open to interpretation or do you want your listeners to maybe see things from your point of view in a way i i prefer if they used it to their own benefit um i don't i don't think we're necessarily telling people how they should go about grieving or anything like that it's it's more about the stories of ourselves but if it can help people like um, navigate their own grief then that's really going to be something that will that will stand the test of time that's the sort of thing that you want your album to do but you never really set, set out trying to do that 
for us when we write music and lyrics etc like we um it's all from our point of view at the time we never do it really for anyone else um so when people could like contact us and say this helped me get through a tough time etc um that really is humbling um i guess there's a couple of tracks on this record i think that are gonna really really are gonna hit home with people and because of that i i do imagine we'll probably get some people like reach out to us for those reasons and you know we're just grateful that that music can do that and we're not the only band in the world that does that and and it's just it's such an incredible thing honestly man like i every time a song comes up to me at the merch stand and say and just saying like this song helped me get through the loss of my dad or the loss of my brother or whatever um but it absolutely chokes me up because you don't expect it you're never prepared for those moments and when it happens it's it truly is humbling yeah it definitely is and because artists do have a responsibility as well so to to resonate with people is really like you to create something that results in an experience that you share with people and nobody goes into it no artist is going into it being like i want it to relate to these people or relate to that when you yeah, just yeah. create something from your heart and it, it I, I feel like when an artist creates something that's the way of letting an artist know that they aren't alone because people do tend to resonate with it yeah it means a lot as well um you know those sorts of things that we're all human like everyone in this band is a very normal person go through the same normal things that everyone else does. We're not, not some sort of rock stars or anything like that. We're just people living our lives and trying to get through the day like everyone else. So, um, you know, everything that goes, we, goes on with our lives and goes into the songs, I'm sure people experience themselves. Mm-hmm. And having this dual vocal style with you and Ed, like, I mean, it, it is like a big change to have him return after, you know, playing with Empire Light and so many other great albums and then you of course you know setting the real groundwork i really thought that the uh the ep that you put out in 2014 was really strong and i've been waiting to hear more oh, cool, from man. it ever since <laughs> but um oh, cool. do you think and i'm obviously asking this way too far in advance being that loss isn't even out yet but do you think that maybe this opened up a lot more doors for devil soul to soul in the future yeah i reckon so um you know it's it's made us realize that we're we're in a good place now as a band, I think our lineup is exactly how it needs to be. Uh, it's a really positive place to be as a as a um, as a band member at the moment, which is great because it hasn't always been. And you know, we're we're in a good place, and that's that means a lot. We have a great label. Um, we've already started talking about writing some new music because we feel like we're in a in a headspace now for it. It's been about a year since we finished writing, um, and there's there's some stuff floating around. So yeah, it might take a couple more years or whatever. I don't know how long. But you know, stuff is starting to come together, and yeah, that's exciting for me because I, you know, it, it's never been this this kind of positive before. So um, yeah, let's keep it going. And see what we can do. Do you when you when when you take this on the road and start bringing this live? Do, are you and Ed gonna like? Are, like, is Ed gonna sing stuff off "Belong and Betray" with you, or are you gonna sing stuff off of like "A Fragile Hope" or "Blessed and Cursed" with him? Is it? Are you gonna change those songs up a little bit live as well? Yeah, I think we might do. We spoke about it the other day. Like, you know, we we we'll probably keep the songs on loss completely as they are. Um, but we have done in the past some of the older tracks with Ed and I together because obviously we did the Fragile, the Fragile Hope anniversary shows. We did the whole album as split vocals, but that was kind of a bit more. I I do a line, he does a line, and it was a bit you know kind of normal like that. Um, we want to make things that maybe a bit more interesting going forward. So maybe even trying to revisit some of the songs and make them a little, a little more special um obviously we can do harmonies with each other now which you know no one in the in the band sings other than ed and i so um it gives us opportunities to really like expand on the sound of previous tracks so we just see what happens we, we've got because lockdown over here we um we won't be playing a uk headline for like a year now so um we've got a, t- a lot of time to think about it so we'll see what happens and I look forward to that. And I hope you can bring uh, Double cool. Soul to Soul to the States soon as well. Oh, man, I'd love to. Big time. That would be a dream. Big time. Yeah, we need you here. Like, uh, like I think a tour would like... I've always said that we need to do like a UK... It, uh, sorry if you don't like this label, but it's just for lack of better words. The UK Metalcore Tour. Like, uh, like have, That's cool. Yeah, like Bring Me the Horizon, you guys, Architects, Bullet for My Valentine, uh, 
uh, while she sleeps, employed to serve, yeah. loathe, like bring all of them out. Like the the. In- oh man, that'd be amazing. That would be some tour. That the- would be ridiculous. We'll call it the British are coming tour. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. Definitely. Um, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, we played with like all of those bands. So um, yeah, they're really great guys as well and gals. So uh, yeah, it would just be amazing to do that. We just see what happens. You know, if we if we get the opportunities to come to the states, we'd love to do it. It's been a dream. I've got a lot of family over there. So I'd love to see them as well. So it's, uh, yeah. yeah, see how it goes, man. Yeah, as everything unfolds, that's another great newcomer to the scene uh, for people to check out. Um, yeah. But, like, uh, what, one thing I wanted to ask you is I'm just curious to, like, th- it seems like for your style there has to be a great scene. It almost seems like uh, metalcore is, like, not just the the sound of British modern day heavy music, but like New England with the metal core scene of Shadows Fall, Kill Switch Engage, all that remains, Australia with Parkway Drive and North Lane yeah, and Hearts yeah. Wake. It seems like that's uh you, you brought metal core to the whole world. Oh yeah, there's so much man, there's so much out there, definitely. Um I I say I think the US do it kind of the best in some ways. I mean when I think of metalcore I think of like Kill Switch more so um I guess UK, a lot of people obviously get thrown into the metalcore um, bucket because it's metalcore kind of just means modern metal now. Yeah. Um, there's a, a lot of people will use it, even if you've got like post rock elements or or whatever. It's um, it's just a, a way of just describing modern metal. So there's so much out there. There's so many bands that are doing a great job. Um, yeah, we're just really fortunate that, that I don't know, in the UK we've kind of we've grown up with a lot of these bands. Like, you know, Bring Me a Horizon. Uh, and Shikari and uh, Architects were around when we started out and we've sort of grown up together. They've obviously got massive and we've kind of like lagged behind quite a lot, but it, it, hopefully we're getting to a point now where we can start maybe building our size up and getting the opportunities that uh, we haven't had in the past. Definitely, definitely. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today and uh, thank you. Uh, look forward to the rest of the world hearing this album. Loss is definitely uh Thanks so much, man. Yeah, it's a, and I think thank you for making an album that I think really goes for the soundtrack of all this, you know, this turmoil, pain, and isolation that we were all going through. Um, is there just anything else with Devil Soul to Soul that you would like to promote for the le- release of this? Can we maybe be getting a live stream performance here and there to uh, support it, or anything else you'd like to play? Uh, sadly, no. Yeah, we were we were thinking about it, but it, it just just the vibe. We we vibe off shows so much, man, and I think um, just being in a stagnant. Uh, studio with uh, no one around. It's, it's, it just doesn't do it for us. Um, we we love to, we love to be around the crowds and kind of using the atmospherics. It's just, it's just not there with those live performance shows. Um, but yeah, we're just like, we're just going to be pushing this album as much as we can. I guess we just hope everyone can it just enjoys it. That's the, that's all we can, all we care about. Um, I I just for uh, I hope it makes families of the bandmates. Uh, happy and proud the ones that have lost people this year and last year and the year before um that's all i all i care about really just that you know it's a good it's a good memoriam to um to those that we've lost yeah well thank you so much paul everybody we are here with paul of devil soul to soul be sure to check out loss coming out via nuclear blast april 9th this is alex from heavy new york and we will see you next time cheers alex